There are two major classifications of foodborne illness caused by microorganisms, foodborne intoxications and foodborne infections. A foodborne infection results from ingesting a microorganism. The microorganism grows in our body and as a result, we get sick. In this example, we have improperly cooked ground beef. E. coli 0157H7 survives in this product as a result result of that improper cooking. If that undercooked hamburger is then ingested, the E. coli can grow in our intestinal tract, and this results in foodborne illness. We have to ingest the pathogen in order to get sick. There are various types of pathogens that cause foodborne infection. This includes bacteria such as E. coli, Salmonella, Listeria monocytogenes, and Campylobacter. Also viruses such as norovirus and hepatitis A virus, as well as parasites such as Toxoplasma, Cyclospora, and others. Again, you have to ingest these pathogens and the growth of the pathogens in our body causes disease. The incubation period is the time it takes from ingesting contaminated food until you have symptoms of disease. For microbial infections, it typically takes a bit of time for the microorganism to replicate to sufficient numbers to cause disease. This typically takes one to two days, but it can be much longer. Most of the foodborne infections cause symptoms of nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea, and the symptoms typically last a few days. Organisms that cause foodborne infection are what we call enteric organisms. These are microorganisms typically found in the gastrointestinal tract of humans and animals. As such, these microorganisms are often associated with products of animal origin, such as beef, poultry, pork, and eggs. However, as I already mentioned, other types of foods can easily be cross-contaminated. This cross-contamination can occur anywhere from the field to the fort. Listed here are enteric pathogens. Most of the bacteria, parasites, and viruses previously mentioned are considered to be enteric pathogens. There are a few of these pathogens that can lead to longer term, more serious health effects after the initial infection. This is what we call sequelae. This slide shows a few pathogens that have these long term health effects, whether they can multiply in food, the source, and the estimated infectious dose. Salmonella is a bacteria that can come from either animals or humans. Its infectious dose ranges from 10 to 100,000 cells. Salmonella can lead to long-term reactive arthritis in some individuals. E. coli 0157H7 comes from humans and animals and has an infectious dose of 10 to 1,000 cells. E. coli 0157H7 can lead to hemolytic uremic syndrome or HUS. E. coli 0157H7 produces a toxin as it grows in our intestine that can be transported via the blood to the kidneys. This leads to catastrophic damage of the kidneys and it is what causes death in individuals that pass away from an E. coli 0157H7 infection. Cryptosporidium, a parasite, comes from human and animals and has an infectious dose of less than 20 oocytes. It can lead to severe long-term diarrhea in patients because it causes such severe damage to the intestinal tract. Hepatitis A virus comes from human sources and has an infectious dose of 10 to 100 viral particles. It can lead to jaundice that lasts week to month though it does not cause chronic infection like hepatitis C virus.